Oh my gosh. Have you guys been so stressed during the COVID-19 crisis and been eating non-stop? <laughs> well, in this video today, I'll tell you exactly how you can stop stressful eating and what we can do to hopefully get you back on track. Guys, let's talk about poop. So for those of you guys who are joining for the first time, my name is Dr. Islam and yes, I'm an actual poop guru. My passion is to give you tips and tricks to help out with your health. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe and share, and don't forget to also join my email newsletter where I give tips and tricks every week to help out with your health. It is so hard during this pandemic to not be stressed, especially with what's going on with the health, your economy, maybe even politics. And one of the more common ways to deal with stress is to eat more. Yes, food, it can sometimes feel so good, especially if you have really, really bad food that's not good for you. Well, in this video, we'll talk about exactly what is stress eating, how common is it, what are the causes for this, the top three ways I recommend to stop stressful eating. And at the very end, I'll talk to you about when is it actually okay to stressfully eat. So what exactly is stress eating? This is actually the process of consuming foods in the hopes of de-stressing what's going on. A lot of people do this either intentionally or more often unintentionally whenever they have a stressful event going on whether it's a pandemic like what's going on maybe you're having a stressful event at work and you go home and you just want to eat some really good chocolate ice cream or have that really yummy hamburger or something like that and it's actually consuming foods in response to a negative emotion that you may be feeling whether it's anger guilt frustration but the problem when it comes to stressful eating is that the physical act of stressful eating can also cause you to feel more anger, more guilt, more frustration, which will make you eat even more, which will cause even more frustration. It ends up being just this vicious cycle that allows you to gain more weight, feel angry, and just feel dejected. Well, I am here to help you break that cycle. And it's a cycle that's very common, about 33% one third guys of Americans suffer from stressful eating and respond in a negative way when it comes to eating, especially when it comes to bad emotions. I have done it. I know for a fact that when I'm stressed, I will eat a freaking bag of potato chips and I did it over the weekend uh. and it sucked, but it tasted good, but I felt terrible about that. We've all done it. I have done it. We've all fallen off that wagon it doesn't mean that something is bad with you and we're here to help out with that. And in order for us to really understand what is going on, we need to understand some of the psychology behind stressful eating. And we do this by answering some questions that we may have whenever we're at a time, whenever we are eating, whenever we're stressed. The first question I want you guys to answer is, what am I doing? What exactly are you doing? Are you physically consuming food? Are you physically drinking something bad? What exactly are you doing? The second question is, what am I feeling? Am I feeling frustrated? Am I angry? Am I upset? Am I dejected? What feelings are occurring during the times when you're stressfully eating? Number three is, what am I thinking about? Are you thinking about that event that occurred at work? Are you thinking about that person who's causing a lot of stress? Try to focus on exactly what you're thinking about when you're in the act of stressful eating. Number four, what time is it? Sometimes you may not realize that it's certain times of the day that's causing you to be more stressed and cause you to eat in this fashion. And number five, who am I with? Maybe it's a person who you're with at the time that's causing you to stressfully eat. Now it's really important to answer these five questions at certain times, mainly right before you're eating, right when you're eating, and maybe an hour or two after you're eating. The whole reason to answer these questions at this point in time is to find patterns. Once we can discover patterns of what could be the inciting event, then we can actually address that. So for example, let's just say that after a Tuesday morning meeting, you got grilled by the company leadership, and so you grab some chocolate chip cookies, and then you notice this happened in a pattern weeks and weeks and weeks, where you kept on getting grilled by this company leadership, and your response to that was just grab those cookies, eat and feel better at that time, then feel crappy later on. Let's say around 2 p.m. you have these afternoon slumps where you just feel kind of blah and at that point in time you decide to have yourself a coca-cola and that boost got you through the end of the day but it ended up being kind of a practice every single day 
Or let's say, for example, last Sunday evening, you were thinking, hey, Monday's fixing to hit, I know it's gonna be a stressful week, let me just have a couple of glasses of wine. And then looking back, you can see that this is a pattern that you're developing at these point in times. Now, when you're looking back on these patterns, the most important thing that you should not do is don't judge yourself. Don't say that you're a bad person. Don't say that you're doing something wrong. Don't say that you are just a failure. Look at this at an objective perspective, as you're as if you are a third person looking down on you to see exactly the types of environments, the types of stresses, the types of people, and maybe the time of the day in which you're having these events. Because once we can figure out these patterns, then we can find ways to break them. So how actually do we stop these patterns from happening? How do we break the cycle of eating when you're stressed. Well, I'm gonna give you my tips on how to do this. Number one is that I want you to have a stress response menu. Yes, an actual menu that you can use that whenever you're at a stressful time, whenever you have a stressful event, you use this instead of your eating habits. You replace one habit with another habit, and that other habit we're gonna replace with is something that you enjoy, something that's good for you, something that's healthy. So, I want you to get a list, physically get a list, either use your computer, type it out, write it out, a list of actions or activities that you enjoy. These are things that can help de-stress you outside of eating. So some of these can include maybe taking five deep breaths, maybe going for a walk outside, maybe petting your dog, maybe journaling, it could be push-ups, maybe it's something as crazy as yelling at the sky! Find something that you can use as a substitute for eating. And I want this to be a physical list. Once you have your list, tip number two is make sure those things are very short, sweet, and easy for you. So for example, let's say that your way to de-stress is to go for a walk. Well, make sure you have your walking shoes close by so that you can find them and go for a walk. Maybe it's journaling. Have that journal close by where you can see it at a place where it's very easy for you to get. Tip number three, place this list in an area where you will constantly see it, whether it's on your kitchen, your pantry, on your door, on your mirror. But I would encourage you to put it in a place where you're actually eating so you can know that can be your list you're gonna go to if you find yourself stressfully eating. And my bonus tip for you, the tip that I'm going to recommend that's gonna give you the most bang for your buck is track your progress. See how you're doing. See if you're making strides in breaking this habit. The physical act of seeing your progress and noticing that will be such a positive reinforcement that it will help you to continue on this cycle. But also number two can help you to understand the patterns of emotional eating that you're having. You can see what exactly is the cause and maybe you can find a way to break that original cause once you see what that pattern is. I also wanna be very clear that it is okay to stress eat at times. It's part of our culture, we sometimes do this. I know that when I have a big event like a birthday party or a celebration, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy myself. Or if I'm celebrating something, I'm going to enjoy myself. So yes, I don't want you to think I'm some sort of crazy person that's telling you to never do that. It is very reasonable to do that. But here's the thing you have to be aware of is that that is a choice that I have made and that is a choice that maybe you have made to do that. So it's, let's say that you want to unwind with a glass of wine or some cheese, you want to celebrate somebody's birthday party or an accomplishment. By doing that, you're making the choice to do that. You're not doing it unconsciously, you're not doing it just automatically. And also by doing that, you can factor in those calories and make adjustments for that. So for me, for example, if I know that I have a birthday coming up, I know that I am going to eat this X amount of calories in excess than what I normally do. So I will make adjustments. I may fast for a little bit longer, I may eat less that day, or maybe I'll exercise more, but I'm making the intention to do that. And that's the important thing that we have to realize is that if there's an intention to eat maybe not so good, or to eat in a stressful situation to unwind, that is a choice that I am making. But more often than not, Whenever we are eating because of stress, we are not making that intention. It becomes automatic because it feels so good. I want to help break that for you, and this is how you can do that. But keep in mind, guys, you are not a failure. You are not a bad person if you eat when you stress. We all do it. I do it. I can guarantee you every single person out there has done that. It does not mean 
that you are some sort of failure. It happens, but our job is to help you fix that. All right, guys, I want to hear from you guys. My question then for you guys is, have you been stress eating more during COVID-19? What tips do you have to help out with stressful eating? What is your favorite way to de-stress? Comment down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. But I thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my weekly newsletter. Hey, if you want more information on what you can do to help out with your gut health, click over here. Or if you're wondering what happened when I Googled poop and what you can do for that, click over here. But guys, stay happy and stay healthy. If we wait till the very end of the video, I'll give you my number one tip to help out to yeah so for those guys who are joining for the first time my name is Dr. Islam and yes I'm an actual poop guru I want you to think of me Wait. so for those guys who are joining yeah so for those guys who are joining for the first time my name is Dr. Islam and yes and I'm, I'm an yeah we all do it we all fall off that wagon it does not mean anything is bad or something wrong it is the, sometimes you may not realize that you're eating at certain times whether you're reading. Now it's really important to answer these questions. <clears throat> and the whole point of answering these questions during these times is to find patterns. And, it's, and, and my bonus tip for you, the tip that's probably gonna make the most important, sorry.